This is a picture of uh, me taken in my first year at primary school before going to the camp. When we arrived in Bergen-Belsen, there's a ramp. The transport were cattle cars, and each cattle car were two barrels. The one barrel was filled with water. The other one was empty. They were, the empty one was destined to do your necessary things that you have in life, in which you have to pass your urine, in which you had to pass your shit, but there was no paper, there was no curtain, there was no separation. So particularly for young people, and particularly for women and girls, they lost their self-respect. For the simple reason they were put together in one cattle car with about 80 other people of all ages. And sometimes because the, uh, the train uh, veered from left to right. Sometimes this barrel, with all the excrements, fell over. So, to use an old English expression, you literally sat in the shit, to put it that way. On the 4th of February 1945, sleeping next to my father, a couple of months before the end of the war, I discovered that he had died. And then, I think the first, most important decision, as you call it, was to take my father's shoes, to take my father's clothes, to take the bowl which we used to eat in, to take his spoon, because a spoon was the most important utensils that you had. When I told my mother across the barbed wire what had happened, she says, see that you have everything double. So I used to go to the kitchen and fetch my soup, but I went twice, once with my left hand and one with my right hand. And the second decision, I think, was that I um, did not share with anybody. Uh, when my mother said to me, even if you're not hungry, eat what you can, because you never know whether you get anything tomorrow. And in that decision, I did everything only for myself. I could not care less about anybody else. It had a big effect on the relationship because um, originally uh, it didn't play any part until he um, got to, to the stage where the children were growing up and he had more time and he could start thinking about the war and he became very depressive. So of course it would put a lot of um, pressure on the, on the couple and on the family, on the family. When Gerald and I came to Europe, the Holocaust didn't play a very important role because people didn't talk, people like him and his mother and all the survivors found it very difficult to talk. And we were busy building a life. The camp period has never been uh, discussed at home after that. Uh, my, my late mother, for instance, refused to sleep in Germany. So uh, when we went once or twice with her to Bergen-Belsen to pay respect to the spirit of my father, um, she never slept in a hotel. We rather, she said, rather drive home if it becomes two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning, but um, uh, I will not sleep in a hotel in Germany. The past? Uh, came back to me after the death of my mother. And 
that sort of brought a certain realism to me. That all of a sudden I suffered from traumas. Traumas of my experiences in the concentration camps. In that period of 10 years, I traveled every month 800 kilometers to see a psychiatrist in Holland and travel back. Until 2002, when my psychiatrist said to me, uh, maybe you should start talking about it. And I came back to Luxembourg and I started talking to students at universities, at high schools, to, to teach them what it was like, to give them a testimony from a witness who is still there, although he's not the youngest. Um, we're living in the 21st century and we have to adjust to the 21st century. We have to get a message across to young, particularly young people in the 21st century. So we have to get a message across to you um, that you have to fight for, for life. You have to fight for what, is, what you believe is right and wrong. And you have to help people um, to see the right way. The, well, maybe not always right, but you have to show civil courage. And I think the youth today, many of them don't have the civil courage. You will carry this forward um, for the rest of your life. The stories that your parents have to tell your grandparents, which are very important in your formation.